Hey everybody, it's Harry from Super Daddy Barbecue, the YouTube channel that teaches you how to master barbecue so you can spread barbecue love. Because today I'm gonna show you guys some tips and tricks on how to cook a brisket in the oven. A lot of uh, you have noticed that I've done many brisket how-to videos. There's 30 over videos that I put out on how to cook brisket. Every conceivable way from cooking a two-hour brisket for a 14-pound packer all the way to ultra low and slow 20-hour brisket. So that's not good enough because uh, I had a viewer ask me, Harry, I live in an apartment and I don't have a smoker. I don't have a gas grill. I don't even have a patio. What can I do to create somewhat of a barbecue brisket with just my oven? So if you are in that camp, you are in luck. Now, I already know that you are going to just click away for those of you diehard aficionados say that Harry is committing blasphemy by trying to cook a barbecue brisket in the oven. Bear with me because not everyone has a smoker like you and me and a backyard to cook in. A lot of folks are kind of cooked up in their apartments. They may be uh, under the quarantine and they can't go anywhere and they want to enjoy some barbecue brisket. So this episode is for those folks who don't have access to pits but really want to put out a decent barbecue brisket. I'm going to show you some tricks using some chemicals including some uh, liquid smoke, uh, some pink salt and show you guys how we calibrate everything so that you can get a somewhat of a great brisket. I'm going to show you even a hack on using a spray bottle to put some secret ingredients in it to create a barbecue brisket in your oven. One of the components of barbecue is the smoke ring and uh, you can actually create your smoke ring by using a product called uh, pink curing salt. I measured out about uh, 0 0.1 ounces here and uh, that's enough for a 12 pound brisket. The ratio of pink salt is 100 pounds of meat to four ounces or a quarter pound of pink salt. So if you do the math, my brisket is about 12 pounds plus. So if you do the math, it's approximately about half uh, an ounce. I have about 0 0.2 ounce of uh, here of, of the pink salt. So I've gotten about half the recommended amount because I don't want to use too much pink salt. Instead of pink salt, if you want, you can also use uh, some uh, ground celery seed that also works. But I'm going to show you a variation using pink salt today. We're going to introduce some flavor into the middle of the brisket because this is a uh, brisket not cooked in the smoker. So we're going to introduce some liquid smoke into the middle of the meat. I'm going to be using uh, a syringe and uh, also instead of using just salt water, I'm going to put a can of beef broth, get some liquid smoke and inject this brisket with a uh, beef broth that has a little bit of infusion of uh, smoke. We're going to also put some of this liquid smoke into a spray bottle like so. We're going to spritz the brisket in the oven and uh, get some of the smoke water onto the surface of the brisket in micro droplets so that some of that smoke flavor will penetrate into the meat and also create the smoke ring and help the pink curing salt a little bit to get kind of that uh, pit look that you see uh, in my videos. In terms of the rub, I'm going to try to use uh, the rub. I really like the combination before. You guys saw me cook a Costco flat with a coffee chocolate rub. So it's uh, basically three parts of this, two parts of a coffee powder and uh, one part of a cocoa powder and a little bit of brown sugar to sweeten things out. And uh, here's the uh, rub that I already pre-mixed. If you want to see how I made it, please uh, go watch my Costco flat video with the coffee chocolate rub. Let's work on the brisket. This is a uh, 12 pound brisket. It's a choice plate. You know, remove it from the packaging. Always make sure that uh, you uh, don't wash your briskets. Take it out of the bag carefully and uh, remove the purge, which is the liquid at the base of the brisket.
and uh, that is has a lot of pathogens you want to dump in the trash you're wondering why i'm doing this not washing my meat i have video links in the uh, description below you can go read some of the usda articles about why you don't wash your meat you just kind of towel it dry so I'm using a 16 inch boning knife. Uh, we want to remove some of the fat from the top. Remove all the uh, silver skin and the fascia. Put your hand underneath and make a bowl and carefully remove all this excess fat that uh, will prevent your rub from touching the meat. I'm going to do a light trim on this. We want to trim for yield. This is not a competition brisket so we're going to trim it kind of backyard style but we're going to add a little bit of a twist by adding the injection we're going to make a little injection with just some beef broth just one can of Campbell's so you can probably get this all at Walmart and be able to create a fairly decent oven brisket at home uh, of course you know please don't don't argue with me and say that this is not real barbecue real barbecue is whatever you want to make it to be and uh not everyone has access to a smoker. If you don't have one and you have access to an oven, that'll work too. Nothing to stop you from having a great tasting tender brisket. Now uh, on this side here, you can see a little bit of scalding here. And uh, that's pretty normal because as the, as the carcass is fabricated at the plant, they wash it in hot water. So a lot of times you see the uh, little bit of a scalding going on. This is pretty perfectly normal. See the side is pink, so it's fine. You can uh, keep the scalding or you can toss it. I just toss it. We want to remove the uh, eye here, the fat, so we can get some of the uh, crust on the inside. So if people ask, ask me, Harry, can you get crust in the oven? Yes, you can, because the crust is the Mela reaction. It is actually a non-enzymatic browning of amino acids and uh, it, occur it occurs at around 250 to about 295 degrees. So we're gonna run a pit around 275. I'm sorry, we're gonna run an oven at 275 and to get a nice crust on it. And you're gonna get lots and lots of flavor with it also. It's trimming off some excess fat here. Nothing too radical. There's a little bit of a uh, like a ligament or sinew here. I don't like it, so I'm gonna trim it off. It's not gonna be good eating. So when you trim, you gotta trim not just with your eyes, you have to trim with your fingers and feel the meat as you trim it. See, and I can feel the hardness here, right? It's come some kind of a sinew here, so that's not good eating. I'm gonna cut it a little bit deeper to try to get it out. But you can see this little ligament here runs really deep and uh, it's not going to be good eating. So I'm going to continue to trim to try to cut it off. That's not going to be good. Okay, so I got to the end of it here and got most of it off. So when you trim, always trim with your eyes and your feel as to how the meat structure is kind of where the grains are going, where the, the uh, tendons are. Uh, like I, right now I have a little problem here. This piece here is no good. See, here's another tendon here. So this tendon, uh, or this sinew is running all the way in. I don't want it, so I'm gonna cut it off. But this is a good teaching brisket because you can see what is being done. Every brisket is different. So you just have to kind of get comfortable Walking around the brisket. There's a lot of fat on the back here. Let's trim some of it off. I like to have more bark on the back. That's just my style. When I do backyard cooking, I also trim a little bit of the back off 
because I want some burn-ins back here. That's my favorite part of the brisket. If you don't want to trim it this way, that's fine. This is just uh, excess fat. You can trim it off after you cook anyway, but uh, I like some bark on my back here, on the back of the point. This is a packer brisket. So a packer brisket is comprised of two muscles, the, the, point, the point here and the flat. The point is known as the fatty. If you go to Texas, go up to the pitmaster at the counter and you ask for brisket, they'll ask you, sir, ma'am, you want fatty or lean? The fatty comes from this part here, which is the point muscle. And once I finish trimming, you, you see kind of how the muscle structure looks very different. And uh, the lean is the flat, and that's where you get your slices of meat from. I'm trimming away some of the point muscle here. So in competition, since I'm a Bavari competitor, we like to serve the point muscle to the judges, and we cut it into cubes, you know, something called burn ends. So that's good enough for a backyard trim. It's pretty good here. That's my knife here. Get some of this excess fat here. All right, this is good enough. I don't want to do it more. Let's preserve as much of the meat as I can. To make things a little bit easier, I recommend you get a uh, hotel pan and uh, you have a grate because uh, you in the pit, we, use, we put the meat on a grate. In the oven, you don't really have any place to put it. So just get one of these grates. It's not terribly expensive. Just go to any kind of uh, Amazon or restaurant supply store, get a grate and you can place your brisket so it does not sit in its own juices. I'm gonna add a little bit of uh, the uh, liquid smoke. You can use any brand you like. I like Wright's. This is found in Walmart. Just pop in about maybe, uh, I wanna say maybe like three teaspoons, one and a half tablespoons, that's enough. You can also taste it, make sure it's okay. Yeah, that's enough smoke. Let's inject it. Let's go ahead and inject our brisket. This is an injector from Amazon. You can go to my uh, Amazon store link in the description below. I have a lot of doodads that I use that's been torture tested. And uh, if you buy from Amazon and you use my link, it kind of helps me generate some revenue for my channel. I've been struggling financially trying to keep uh, you know in the black with the channel because YouTube isn't really paying a lot for my views, but you know, with your help and maybe some help from your, my Patreon subscribers, we can continue to keep this channel with new content going. I just am injecting it with the grain like so. And about every inch or so, I'm gonna fill it up, pull the needle back slightly, fill every single square inch with this smoky, beefy solution here. And do you need to inject uh, the answer is no, but if you want to get the best possible result from your oven brisket, I highly recommend doing this because uh, when you're cooking at home, there's really not a lot of smoke flavor. Oops, there's a lot of, lot of mm, sorry, if you saw, saw that spray going up, not a lot of smoke flavor going on. So you got to kind of amp it up a little bit with this uh, beef broth that's kind of smoky. <laughs> Okay, I start by putting a little bit of the pink salt onto the meat here. And then you just want to apply a very, very even coat of this uh, one fifth of an ounce of pink salt. I use my fingers here, I don't want to kind of knock it over. So sprinkle it just a little bit. Tiny, tiny amount will, will, will give you the smoke ring that you need. All right, let's create our smoke water. I have about one cup of water in a spray bottle here. I'm gonna add about two tablespoons of liquid smoke in there. Make the biscuit spits. All right, let me get my uh, coffee chocolate rub on it right now. The 
quick pass over it, make sure I got all the sides. Looks pretty good, ready to go into the oven. Every hour or so, you want to spray the meat. Let's spray with some of this. Turn it around so it cooks evenly. We're gonna use some beef broth. Uh, I have, uh, I usually use the Campbell's beef broth, but I have uh, some uh, leftover brisket uh, mop here. So I'm just gonna use it up. You can save your brisket mop and uh, you can freeze it and it'll last you for many, many months in the freezer. It's gonna drizzle some here very carefully. Rehydrate the brisket. About 10 ounces of uh, mop is good. And you notice how I made a little bolt here with the foil so that I can catch the excess liquid before I wrap it in the foil. Brisket is done and uh, it's broke tender. Let's uh, take a look and slice it up. Give it a taste test for our oven brisket with a few hacks like uh, liquid smoke. Spraying with uh, some uh, water with smoke in it, injecting it with some beef broth with some uh, smoke in it, and uh, let's see how it looks like. Absolutely gorgeous. You can see that here. And uh, this is actually better than I expected. So I surprise myself sometimes. Sometimes, you know, when you apply food science, uh, you know, just a tiny, tiny 0 0.2 grams of pink salt and uh, you know, nitrites work. You can use, uh, obviously, celery seed, but, you know, I decided to try something different today. It's a little bit chemical product here. And uh, you can see the, uh, you can see the smoke ring here. And if I did not tell you this was cooked in the oven, I bet you, you would not, you know, you would not know. All right, so appearance wise, <laughs> look at this. That is a killer good smoke ring. Talk is cheap, as they say, looks good. Let's see how, how it tastes. Let's give it a taste test now. All right, you can see that uh, it's uh, just a tad overdone, but no, no big deal. Pull it. All right, look at that. Super good. We have a bite here. All right, the flat is really moist, tender, beefy flavor. That uh, Campbell's beef broth injection really worked. The smoke is very slight, but I do detect that it's smoky. Considering that it's cooked in the oven, that is actually a grand achievement to have it actually taste smoky. Crust is, is top notch. Uh, you can see good technique here. That uh, chocolate coffee rub, really, really good. Uh, good, good crusty bark. I, uh, I think that I would like a little bit more salt on it. Let me get some salt. Flavor is great, but just a, just a tad of salt. So final seasonings are very important. Whenever you serve food to your friends and family, you just have to make sure that you do any final seasonings because just a, just a tiny, tiny few grains of salt can wake up the flavor and there can be a night and day difference in the perception of the taste buds. Yeah, so much better. Just a few grains of salt on it brings out the flavor phenomenally. I'm also gonna try it with the jus. Do a dip and an undip version. So the jus is here. So it's on camera, but you can see there. So the jus has a lot of flavor, so you have to decide whether your brisket tastes better on its own or a little bit of a salt and pepper and a little bit of a jus dipped into it. Yep. A little bit of salt, a little bit of jus. Damn, this is a damn good brisket. Look at that. Really good brisket. All right, so that's the flat muscle or the lean as in Texas. 
Let's go try a burn in now. Let me go pick a good burn in here. All right, this one's particularly good. It's nice and soft, right? I'm gonna I'm gonna try it without the salt first. Show you how we taste test our food. Hmm. Super beefy, moist, tender. Just a tiny, tiny hint of smoke. Absolutely, absolutely decent smoke ring, right? So, oi muscle, fantastic. We'll try another piece of the point, show you guys how we, we taste it. Just some try a little, tiny bit of salt here. There's a few grains of salt. So, just a few grains, right? That's all you need to break, break up the flavor. Dip the base of the, it into the liquid, like so. All right, this is how we do in competition. Pop in your mouth. Mmm, mmm. There is some killer banana. All right, so, for those of you who are skeptical, and I was a little skeptical too, as to how good this can be, uh, oven brisket, blasphemy to some of you, but I've proven that it can be done. For our friends and family and our barbecue brothers and sisters who live in apartments, who don't have access to a pit or a patio or even a grill, this is definitely a viable option. All you need to do is go to Walmart, get yourself a brisket, try to pick a good one. I have a video on how to select meats, so pick yourself a good brisket from Walmart, get this Wright's liquid smoke, get yourself a can of Campbell's beef broth, and come home, try some of these techniques I taught you, and uh, if you don't want to use my Slappy Daddy Mula rub, that's okay. Just go ahead and use the salt and pepper, SPG, or you can use salt pepper with the white pepper and the celery seed that I showed you guys in my 30 other how-to videos. This video, I skipped a lot of detail and I uh, just gave you the basics of how to cook this. If you want more of my super nerdy black belt tips contained in the other 30 videos, you got to go back and hunt it down. This one was just a simple cook. Uh, meant for basically a beginner who wants to try brisket, wants to try brisket in the oven at home. So, enough talking for by me. Mr. Beans has been very patient, right, Mr. Beans? So, I'm going to give him some oven brisket to see if my barbecue judge here will throw his uh, eyes up and say, what is this stuff you're serving me, Harry? I need the real stuff. Give me my Wagyu, give me my primes, but we'll see what happens. All right, I got a big piece of point in the flat for Mr. Beans. He's ready for his uh, brisket taste test. All right, Mr. Beans, sit down, sit. So Beans, this is a uh, oven brisket and uh, it's not your usual smoked brisket, but uh, I want you to take a quick look, all right? And uh, take a quick look and then see if you like it, okay? All right, go. Eating the point and the flat. Licking the plate now. Okay. Okay, what do you think, Beans? He's going back to get another lick. So I guess he must like it. So not bad, right? For a uh, oven brisket. No? <laughs> He's walking away. You want some more beans? Want some more? You know, I, I honestly don't think he likes this really much. Right? Okay. Back to the regular programming for you beans and uh, get you some real brisket cooked in the pit. So there you have it. This is my uh, oven brisket episode. Hope you guys liked it. Picked up a few tricks. Saw how great... The appearance was and the flavor, texture, tenderness, moisture, and the bark. So these are all the hallmarks of a good competition style brisket. We did it at home. Now you're going to ask me, Harry, is this oven brisket anywhere close to a competition brisket? The answer I have to tell you, of course, is no, right? But given that you only have limited resources cooking in the oven, it is not bad. And uh, if I had to pick a number, what percentage of a competition brisket, if a brisket, competition brisket was a 10, cooked in the pit with all of the steps that I show you, how will this brisket rank? You know, honestly, today's brisket is really, really good. You know, I have to be honest and say that I would give this maybe, I think like something like 85%, 80% of a uh, pit brisket. That 15% is because of the smoke. But in terms of the color, bark, flavor, that coffee, chocolate rub, that's actually fantastic. That is my new go-to rub now. I, I love that cocoa, coffee, brown sugar, chocolate, Slappy Daddy Moolah rub. So, hey, you know, I may even put it in a bottle and uh, call it my Harry's uh, new and improved brisket rub with a little secret ingredient of the coffee powder 
and the uh, cocoa powder, a little bit of brown sugar. I love it. Look at how beautiful and gorgeous the, the bark is. This is absolutely gorgeous. I will be cooking more briskets in the pit. I'm going to use my um, coffee chocolate rub that I did on my oven brisket in the pit soon. So if you guys want to watch future episodes, please tune in. For those of you who want to help me on my channel, and if my videos have value to you, then you learn something, you can also help me out by checking out my Patreon page, Harry Sue. See if you can help me, you know, continue my video projects to provide you guys with new, fun, exciting, entertaining, educational content.